watch out! Ah! Get it? Because watch, we're doing oh, watch, watch today. Out. How much watch would a witch watch watch if a witch? Watch, witch, watch wood. All right, let's go watch some wood. Oh my God. Shit. Today on Worth It Lifestyle, we're going to be trying three watches at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. Worth it! I don't wear necklaces or rings or jewelry, but I feel like a watch is where I can kind of express myself. Okay, in three words, what are you looking for in your next watch? Style, class, mm. and function. I'm more of a comfort style, of course. Versatility, you know? I got a lot of jackets, okay? It's gotta fit the jacket. All right, it's time to go to our first location. Ha! <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I'm Tim. I'm a co-founder at E1 with Hyung Soo Kim, and we create the Bradley Timepiece. Hi, I'm Brad, and I'm Bradley from the Bradley Timepiece. <laughs> so you're not being interviewed right now because you literally have to leave at any point today, like? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. That's fine. So we'll let Tim tell your story. So this watch is for people with vision impairment, but it's also for everybody. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of your company, E1? We started out in Boston, Massachusetts. My co-founder, Hyung Soo, was actually studying at MIT. One of his classmates had a vision impairment, and he noticed that there really wasn't a good way for him to tell the time during class. And so that was really the inspiration behind tackling this issue of creating a universally designed timepiece. I deployed twice, once to Iraq, once to Afghanistan. And unfortunately, at the tail end of my Afghanistan deployment, I actually stepped on one of those hidden bombs in the ground. I was unable to walk away from that blast with my vision. I needed a medium through which to show the community that I'm gonna be okay. And Hung Zhu comes and says, hey, you know, we've got to, we're gonna start a company that's gonna build a product for you. So this is two types of watches they use. This is talking watch you press button and it speaks up time. Obviously, it's really annoying. And this is the, the Braille watch. Open the cover glass to touch the hand. And as you can see, you would feel where the hour hand and the minute hand is. But it's easily moved out of place. And if I move it, it doesn't have any way to correct itself. Right. Yeah, that's impossible. We designed our timepiece with the magnetic ball bearings. We modified the hour and minute hands so that there are magnets attached to them. They are underneath the surface of the watch. The outside indicates hours, face indicates minutes. And if it gets knocked out of place, you just shake your wrist and it goes back to the correct time. That was to fix both of these issues where you have something that's too loud or something that you can move easily. Many of our watches have titanium cases, so they're super lightweight. We PVD plate them. We want to make sure it's still scratch resistant. What's the starting point price-wise for one of these? The starting point is around $260. The high end that we have right now is 315 so we tried to price it at a really affordable price range. One of the most compelling parts about this product was that we're breaking down this boundary between the abled and the disabled with this design. We thought about this company because it's a great looking watch. Let's go onto the watch now. We've got some braille I noticed right on the front of yeah. this package. It's a clean looking box. It's beautiful. It's like a sword. Are you ready? Let's do this. Wow. My favorite part of unboxing is taking the plastic off. Is that not satisfying? That's a good looking watch right there. It's my color palette, shades of gray. I got the classic timepiece, the one that was the original. This is the cobalt and the material is stainless steel. You can smell that genuine leather right there. Don't eat it. This is not a food <laughs> video, Steven. The timepiece right here is beautiful. The connection from the band to the timepiece, you can see it moving very easily. Damn, that is a cool looking watch. Whoa, magnets. I mean, the overall feel like the ceramic is smooth. It's like nice to the touch, but then the ridges are kind of sharp. This matches pretty much any outfit I have. I feel like a girl who just got her engagement ring and wants to just like pose with it in every picture. I'm gonna set your time. Okay. And you're gonna tell me what time it is. All right. All right, tell me what time it is. It's like, 6.10? Close. 6.15? Yeah. I got it. Change right. my time. Uh, you really changing the time, huh? 7.15? Mm, 7.19. Close You enough. would do that. <laughs> I am just like mesmerized by these balls. You know, like those, you know, like the balls that go back and forth, <laughs> you know? All right. Dude, the Bradley timepiece, what's not to love? It's an amazing story. Bradley, American hero. This is the one thing I love about this show. We're covering watches and we can talk about people with disabilities and how the world has not been made easier for them. Watch fact. That's my radio voice. So bracelets with watches on them came in and out of fashion in around the 18th to 19th century. But the way that they became trendy was World War I soldiers would wear watches out of convenience. It was convenient compared to like looking at like a clock at a building. Or like a pocket watch. Oh, okay. I just realized something. We have now 
gone back in time because we are now all a part of the pocket watch movement again. The iPhone. Oh, shit. I it know! It just goes back to this whole concept of time and us like living on this continuum where history just keeps repeating itself, you know? The sun has been here all along. The OG pocket watch. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, we're on our way to location number two. It is this young, brilliant watchmaker who has started a company called Weiss Watches. I'm Cameron Weiss. I am the founder and master watchmaker at Weiss Watch Company. And you guys make watches right here in California. The majority of watches are all gonna come from Switzerland or Asia. So we're kind of a, an outlier here in the US. How does someone become a master watchmaker? The master watchmaker is someone who could pretty much make or repair almost any watch. Now there's quartz watches with batteries and, and electronic components. The mechanical watch, it's more about the craft of watchmaking, keeping that tradition alive. So a watchmaker in 100 years could still go in and repair it. Can we talk about your watches and how you make them? The whole process of making a watch really begins with paper. Maybe sketching some things out, and usually I'm looking through historic timepieces. Grant will then go through those and start to work on 3D documentation. So this is a milling machine here. Here we make our uh, bridges and main plates. What is this? This is the coolant. Now that's refreshing. It starts with the, the base movement. The movement is the internal mechanism that actually keeps time. Kind of like the engine. We have to first clean everything. We do the assembly process by hand. So that's placing all the, the wheels into their pivot areas and into the bearings, which are the jewels. Then we add the bridges on top of all those parts that kind of hold them together, make sure all of our axles are, are aligned. Then we go ahead and we apply the dial, the face of the watch that everyone sees, the hour indications, branding, then the hands are pressed on. We now have to take the case, which would have also been assembled from tubes and sapphire crystals that are the glass on either side, seal everything up, and timing tests. We actually made our standard issue field watch. I wanted it to be a little bit of a military inspired watch with a little bit of a pocket watch kind of look to it with the second hands over here running. Stainless steel, green canvas, black dial, pretty simple. But if you turn it around, there's the mechanical movement. So there's no batteries, all metal parts because something that was done in the past and is still interesting and relevant today, I hope will still be interesting interesting and relevant in another 100 years. Having worked with time and watches for much of your life, do you believe that time travel is possible? That's actually not the first time I have had that question asked. Weiss American Issue Field Watch. I gotta say, I feel like I just took my first course in watchmaking. It's the world's greatest puzzle. Look at these boxes. I love a good wooden box. All right, you ready to pop this open? Let's pop it, baby. <laughs> Take that again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got the white dial. It's got that olive drab color. I have the latte color. I love when leather looks this color, a little bit worn down. Flip it around, baby. See, this is what I'm talking about. All of these tiny pieces, the small pendulum going back and forth. It's like Santa's elves living in this piece. Yeah, I feel like tired for them. Knowing how each piece was deliberately put there, not by a machine, by a person. It gives it a little extra like magic. Yes. You know, like something yes. special about it. Very comfortable. Just clean and simple design. But it is not simple when you look at all that goes into the making of it. My last test for the watch, it's the fashion test. Can it meet my fashion standard? It could be dressed up to the prom. It could be dressed down to my PJs. I could be not wearing anything at all. I'm trying to get that image out of my head of you just naked but only wearing a watch. Weiss watches. Timeless. Awesome brand. American made. What a cool dude also. He's a master watchmaker. Watch master. Watch fact! Watch fact. On most watch advertisements, guess what time they show for the advertisement. It's like 10-10. Well, that, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. I remember just like taking a mental note because ever since I was a baby, my dad would tuck me in at 1010. So when I saw 1010, hey, my dad doesn't tuck me in that's anymore. That's cute, man. <laughs> We're going to the last watch spot. It's called Hingwali Jeweler, right in the San Gabriel Valley, which is actually one of my favorite places to go to. They got great Chinese food, great boba. You should definitely hit it up if you're going to oh, LA. Let's get some boba. Maybe after. 
I'm David Lee. I'm the CEO and chairman of Hingwa Lee Jewelers and Hingwa Lee Group. So today I'm going to show you this very special Gerard Perigo jackpot tourbillon watch, which is a working jackpot watch like in the casino with a tourbillon function. This building is a landmark building for San Gabriel. It's the biggest jewelry store in North America. We have about 100 million of inventory value here. Whoa. So we're in a vault. Yes, yeah, so we're actually in a vault. It's built especially as a vault. When you see in the movie all the lasers and everything, that actually happens. Pretty good move, a team coming in posed as a video squad. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so when you buy a watch, what are you looking for? First of all, the more functionality that's put into one watch is just going to make it more valuable. Like this one that we're going to see today, there's only 25 ever going to be made, which also makes it valuable. We're here to see a watch valued over $700,000. That's right. Laid Honest. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So this is the GP or Gerard Perigo jackpot tourbillon watch. It's actually a 18 karat rose gold. So Gerard Perigo GP is a 227 year old watch company from Switzerland, right? But this jackpot function has never been done by anybody else before. You see the lever here and you oh. can pull it and you see it go. <laughs> what? Yeah. And there's 160 different combinations. All mechanical right. within this tiny. Well, see, it's all mechanical oh. back here. Are we ready to try it? I think so. Oh yeah, question. Yeah. So would it be possible to try on as many as we can fit onto our wrists? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly could happen, but I'll tell them to close the door first because you guys can't run out. But yeah, I, I can do that. I know, right? This is 30 uh -huh. grand. Look at that. Oh, I would Rolex. love a Rolex. Oh, yes. That is a watch right there. Can we do one more? No, right? I don't think we got one more here. It's 156K right there. Wow. Hey, Ben, what time is it? It's money time. We got five watches. This is your dream come true. It is. I, I want these watches. Wow. Well, you're going to have to give them back. Let's go check out the... <laughs> <laughs> Caught. <laughs> so, all right. So, I'm gonna first measure kind of uh, how it fits on there. Okay. For you. Whoa. And, um, Whoa. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a big watch. <laughs> you just went way up in value. <laughs> this is the most expensive thing I've put on my body. So, okay. Can I just first say this is extremely heavy. It's like one of those um, weights that you carry on when you want to work out. Here's the lever right here. So go ahead and pull it back. Oh. 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 <laughs> Does anything happen if you get all three in a row? Nothing comes out of it or anything, but it is still just as exciting though. It's very exciting. It actually feels comfortable on my wrist, which I think is most important for me. One thing I will say, this matches my outfit, okay? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. And, and this is the exhibition back, so you can see into the movement of the watch. Yeah. Look at that is Gorgeous. All right, you want it? I would love it. All right, let's switch thoughts. Uh, oh, wow, it is heavy. It feels so good, <laughs> but it doesn't feel fragile at all. I mean, this feels like a beast. Here you see the carriage. You see the mainspring turning, mm -hmm. and yet the whole carriage is turning, too. It's mesmerizing to look at. Do your best watch advertisement right now. Feeling lucky? Gerard Perigo, the time is now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! Jackpot! Oh, wow, you got Dude, jackpot. Jackpot. I can't believe it. Jackpot. I get to keep the watch, well, right? well, we'll talk about that. Well, this has been great. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Thank you again for taking me on your wonderful magical mystery tour. No problem. Now's the time where we decide which watch was the most worth it to you. The Bradley timepiece, incredible story, great watch. However, mm. my worth it winner uh -oh. goes with Weiss watch. The amount of craftsmanship and care makes me think that that's the worth it winner. So, King Wally Jeweler is a wonderful place to shop. David, I will say, definitely help me understand expensive watches. However, my worth of winner goes to the Bradley timepiece. Whoa! It's because of what David told me though. Watches are conversation starters. Having a Bradley timepiece would be great because I could wear that watch. Be like, oh, well, let me tell you about the story of how this company cared about people with vision impairment. I can't hear you very well, but what's your worth of winner? Weiss! Woo! Weiss for the win, that's two on one. Next time on Worth It, Benjamin Coleman, me, his uncle. See us there, Hamptons, baby.